In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a new product from Skystars. Now, they're really trying to make a name out there, and they've recently released a new flight controller called the Skystars F722HD. Now, we're going to cover quite a lot today. We're going to do an advanced breakdown. We're also going to be doing a beginner setup guide. So the timetables are down below, so you can skip to whatever part of the video you'd like. And the links are down below, also with a 7% coupon on all RC products, if you're interested in that. So first of all, let's start with the accessories and just do a quick intro of this guy. So it's rocking an F722 here, and it has a 9-volt regulator, and it has some other really nice features we're going to cover in a bit. Now, for the accessories they provided, is just this little goodie bag right here. So we get a connector right here. This is really nice, actually. Uh, this right here is for the DJI, so you don't need to solder if you have the big module, so the default, you know, the big DJI module, uh, you'll be able to quickly just connect it and have everything routed. So that's really nice there. We have four rubber grommets and the output for the ESC. Now the output for the ESC is not routed, so you can route this to however you want or however you please depending on your ESC. And you can see that little connector right there and you just stick those in there and you route them accordingly to what your ESC spec is. Now when you do that, oh, you should definitely really think about marking one of the connectors because if you flip them, usually you could burn a thing or two. So yeah, just keep that in mind. So you'd want to mark one side, maybe the side that's going to the flight controller would be the best here. And let's see if they have an output for the ESC. Yeah, they do. So you, if for some reason, I've actually had this happen, this were to break, that not on this one, I've had it happen on iFlight. Uh, if this were to break here, then you would be able to still solder your ESC right there. That is really nice to see here, uh, very thoughtful. So with that being said, let's jump to the advanced breakdown and then uh, we'll take it from there. So it's using an F722, which is really great, especially for future proofing here. And if we take a look at the peripherals, we have a 10 volt, we have five volt, which you should always have a five volt. And we also have a 3.3 volt here. Now we also have the connector dedicated for the DJI setup and they also do provide the wire if you needed that. Not only that, if you had a Cadex Vista, you don't need to cut that wire because they have broken it out into pads for you also on the bottom, which is really useful. And I haven't found it so useful until the other day where I had a crash and the tree branch went through the quadcopter and basically ripped out my connector. Now on that flight controller, if it didn't have the pads, basically it'd be an absolute nightmare to solder onto these right here or try to fix it. So uh, this is kind of something I always look for now to have pads and a connector or just the pads. So that's something really nice and it's a nice touch because they have quite a lot to show because they're basically still a pretty new company here and they should give us the best possible thing. Plus this thing is going for 29 bucks. Now, if we look here, we also see that we have memory. So this is really great for black box logging. You do have memory. We still have our on-screen display, even though this is for the HD DJI setup. Some flight controllers remove the on-screen display for the analog, but like this, you have the flexibility of both worlds. You could either go HD or you go analog with no sacrifices. So that's really nice. And you also get the extra benefit of a 10 volt regulator. Now, I really don't know why they did the layout like this, and I'll explain what I mean in a bit here, uh, especially with the video transmitter part. So for example, if you're gonna connect an analog video transmitter, you would go in this area here, but if you take a closer look at this area, there's no 10 volt, or we have a VB uh, positive, which is battery voltage positive. But where you'd wanna get the positive or the red wire for your video transmitter would be this pad right here on the 10 volt. That's where, I, oh shit, no, that you would have screwed up right there. Thing would have never booted. You wanna put it right there on the 10 volt, which is this one right here. So that's where you wanna power up your analog video transmitter if it's a battery voltage video transmitter. Five volt, you just go right there and you're good to go. So also another thing that I like that they've done with the design here is we have the receiver all in one area. So you have your T1, S bus, PPM, RSI, DSM, 3.3, 5 volt, and ground. You have that all in one area uh, because here, this is basically UART1 right here. So S bus would be R1 right there. And uh, because this is an F7, you don't really need to care about inversion or whatnot. So you can even connect your IBUS right there. And this is T1. So if you're going to be using Crossfire, that's where you, these two, the two pads are going to be connecting to here. Now, another really nice thing is down here with the DJI connection part. So with the DJI, you need a UART in order to send the on-screen display stuff. And they used uh, UART 6 here, which is RX6 and TX6. And for the analog uh, video transmitter, if you wanted to use smart audio, they have a TX6 available for you. So they didn't use another UART because when you're connecting 
something to this or a video transmitter to this, you're either going analog or HD. And what they've done here is if they, they've used the same UART, uh, so you don't have less UARTs, which again, is kind of a nice little touch and very thoughtful in my opinion. Because here, as you can see, we have UART 5 here, we have UART 4. I think UART 4 would be for telemetry possibly, or actually there is no telemetry pad. Hmm. Oh no, it's UART 3. UART 3 is for telemetry right there. So we have one, two, uh, three, three available UARTs do what you want with, which is really nice here. And I'm guessing these are uh, LED pads right here, which you could connect LEDs to, but I'm not really sure on that. So you'd have to double check that here. You still also have a dedicated LED pad right there. You have your buzzer pad, so it's all really nice. Everything is there for you. On the bottom here, again, they kept the on-screen display so you could have the best of, best of both worlds here. And we are using an MPU 6000 gyro and we have two switching regulators, one for five volt and we have the other one for the 10 volt, which is really great. Uh, I think 10 volt is the best way to go, I think, with the DJI stuff because it just gives it a little bit more power. But it's really hard to say. I just read some people say that, but I've never really tested it and it could have some benefits, but I don't think anything substantially high or anything. Now also take something into consideration here. If you ever needed battery voltage, they have an extra battery voltage pad for you right there. Uh, and you could also access it from here if you use the connector. But if you didn't use the connector, then really all you could really access it from is right there. Now this thing does need battery voltage as an input in order to power on the 10 volt regulator. And I think the 10 volt passes the 10 volt down to the 5 volt and enables the 5 volt and the 5 volt passes down to the 3.3 volt and you get the idea here. Uh, barometer, we don't have a barometer here. It's a really uh, elegant design. It has everything you need here. We have a camera input, so um, it's really good. And I also like the shape of it because let's just say you barely had enough space and this could actually mean the difference, these little concaves that are, that are in the flight controller here. This could be a difference of being able to fit that extra capacitor or the extra wire routing something. So I really like seeing that also. So, so far it looks good, but the testing, we just have to wait and see. Uh, but more than likely, most of these flight controllers come good because they're just all basically identical, just the layouts and the features they provide are slightly different. Here, it just seems like a pretty basic setup. Uh, also, something really nice to see here is the on-screen display is very close to the video transmitter and the camera part. I always forget to mention that. That's a really good sign. That's something you always want to look for also, uh, just because there's no more resistance and you could have less of issues with the on-screen display. Not that we have any issues recently with it, but um, yeah, just keep that in mind. And they've used tantalum capacitors, which are a bit more expensive. And these are the type of capacitors you really want to see next to your on-screen display. Uh, it just means that they didn't go cheap on you. Now, you know, but it's a nice thing to see, not that it doesn't make a really big difference, but that's all. That's something you kind of want to look for sometimes, especially if you're paying a bit more than 25 bucks in my opinion. And uh, yeah, that's really it for the advanced breakdown. Let's go ahead and jump to the beginner setup guide. All right, so now we're gonna talk about connecting your FPV camera. Now, a word of advice, if you have an FPV camera and it says it takes, you know, anywhere between five and 24 volts, uh, don't give it battery voltage. Always stick your FPV cameras on five volts. It's the best for the camera and you reduce any possible issues in the future, such as the lines in your video feed. So keep that in mind because usually cameras don't have really great filtration. So you wanna give them a smooth, small voltage that'll get them to run really nicely. So let's go ahead and start off with the power. So the power is usually going to be the first one. Usually most of these are in the same order. There's three main wires you really want, which is power, uh, which is the positive, the negative, and the, videos, the video signal. So let's start with the positive here. So it's gonna be VCC, or it'll say five volts or five volts to something. So where we wanna connect this is very simple. Obviously we wanna go and grab five volts. And the place we're actually gonna grab that from, I know it looks a little bit uh, weird, but as you can tell, this says five volts. So we're gonna put that right there. And the next one we're gonna need is ground and it's gonna be right under it. So you just saw that right over here. And now we have our, <clears throat> And like this, our camera has power. Now the last thing we need is the video signal. We have to route the video signal through the flight controller so it could overlay this useful information like your battery voltage, where you're at, if you have GPS and all these kinds of things. So, so in the place where we're gonna route it is going to be, we're just gonna move like that so you don't mix anything. And it's gonna be right here on this camera wire, whoopsie. So now like this, our camera is basically complete. We have our video signal, we have our power, 
and you're good to go. So that's really it. anything else on there. You could really ignore until you get more advanced, but you don't really need to mess with that stuff. So you reduce your chances of actually frying something. So keep it simple and basic in the beginning. And uh, these are the three main wires on all FPV cameras that are very important. Let's go ahead and jump to the next step now. All right, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and connect our video transmitter. However, before you do, check your documentation on your video transmitter and figure out the input voltage because there's two types in the market. There's ones that only take five volts and there's ones that take seven volts and above. It'll say seven to 34, seven to 24, whatever it might be, seven and above. The seven and above we call battery voltage video transmitters and the five volt we just call five volt. So let's first figure out, let's first cover the five volt. So let's just pretend this one is a five volt video transmitter. Now, the only difference between the five volt and the battery voltage video transmitter is the red wires connection. That's about it. So if we were to have a five volt video transmitter, then the red wire of our video transmitter is just going to go to a five volt, just like that. So we're just going to say five volt. Maybe I should make that line a little bit smaller here. Now, if we had a 10 volt video transmitter, or sorry, battery voltage video transmitter, you can connect it to this one, which is battery voltage. But since we have the luxury of a 10 volt regulator, which will give us clean uh, voltage, so it reduces our chances of having noise in our video feed, which means really bad lines at different throttle levels. So you really always want to stick it on a regulator. And that's why I always like having a regulator on a flight controller. And the place where we could grab that from is right here. We have a 10 volt here. And we have another 10 volt here, so you can grab that from wherever you want. But for this video, we're just gonna do it right here just to keep it kind of clean. So I'm just gonna set that up like that. I'm gonna say 10 volts. So that's the 10 volt line. This is the five volt line. That is the only difference. So make sure you know where yours connects because if you had a five volt and you connect it on 10 volt, you're gonna fry it. But if you had a uh, 10 volt and you connect it on a five volt, it just won't turn on. So you'll be okay in that perspective. So let's look at the next thing. What do we need? Well, we need ground. The power is very important. So the ground is going to be your black wire. And we're just going to go ahead and find the closest ground. Now, theoretically, they want you to install it right here, right over here. That's where they've designed it to go. So that's where we'll install it. Now, the next wire is one of the most important wires. There's just three main wires, really. Anything extra is just extra here which is going to be the yellow line. So the yellow line here is going to go to the VTX pad right over here. And the reason for the flight the, and the reason for the FPV camera and the video transmitter to connect to the flight controller is because the the flight controller will get the video feed and overlay all this useful information that broadcasts back to your goggles with the FPV camera feed. So that's why we connect them to the flight controller instead of connecting them directly. However, you can connect the FPV camera and the video transmitter together directly, these yellow lines, and but you won't have any valuable information uh, down in your video feed. So keep that in mind here. Now, usually some uh, video transmitter come with an extra red and black wire. Those are outputs, be careful. So make sure you read the input voltage and which wires are for the input because those are five volt outputs on some flight on video transmitters. So you might burn something. So just be very careful with that. Now, the last thing is going to be a protocol, which is you just have two in the market, IRC Tramp Protocol and Smart Audio. And what that does is basically allow you to change the output power of the video transmitter, the channel, without having to come here and press this button. Uh, but you can access that through the on-screen display. Uh, I'm not going to cover it in this video, but there's probably plenty of tutorials out there on it. And if you wanted, if you had this smart audio IRC Tramp protocol, the place you're going to want to connect it is usually a T-pad. And most flight controllers nowadays will give you a T-pad close to the video, uh, video transmitter part. As you can tell right there, we have TX6. So in the beta flights ports tab, when you're in beta flight, when you go to the ports tab, UART6, you want to just turn off everything and enable uh, either smart audio under peripherals or IRC tramp protocol, depending on the protocol of your video transmitter. And you're good to go. Then you'll figure out how to use it on your own. And that's really it for the video transmitter part. Let's go ahead and jump into the receiver section and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and cover the receivers. We're gonna cover S bus, we're gonna cover I bus, and we're also gonna cover the TBS crossfire. So first of all, let's start with the power and then uh, we'll discuss the signal wire because the only difference are the signal wires. So let's go ahead and do this together really quickly. 
So we're going to start with 5 volts because usually IBUS, SBUS and the TBS Crossfire take 5 volts. And this area right here is what they have set up for any type of receiver. So let's do this together here. So 5 volts is going to be right there, just simple 5 volts and you connect that to your receiver's uh, 5 volt pad. So let's go ahead and do that as nice as possible here. There we go. So now we have our 5 volts and that'll go on your TBS Crossfire or, uh, or IBUS receiver. You should know which one's a 5 volt and which one's not. Next we're going to connect the ground. So the ground is usually the black wire here. We're just making it in white. Boom, we're done. Now, this is the most important part you want to look at here. So currently we have an F7. Now F7 plays a really big role into this because when you have an F7, you're allowed to connect IBUS and SBUS to the same location and the TBS Crossfire basically all into the same location. So for example, here we have an SBUS and it's pretty simple as that says SBUS right there. And that's where we're going to connect our SBUS signal. Now, if you had IBUS, it would also connect right here. So, and we're done with the SBUS and IBUS. Now, if we have TBS Crossfire, usually they have two paths. They have a TX and a RX uh, on your receiver. So the TX of the TBS Crossfire is going to connect to exactly where the IBUS and the SBUS connected, right there on the SBUS pad. Now the RX here, which I made in blue, uh, is going to go to that T1 pad right there. So you can see the design of this flight controller is really nice and very, very thoughtful. Very nice. So you can connect just about everything you want right here. And uh, just like that, you're basically done. There's really nothing else to it. That's the really nice thing about F7s is you can connect them anywhere. Uh, so like that, we're basically done. Now also something really important that you might not know when you go into beta flight to set this up, this would basically be considered UART1. So this is UART1. So yeah, sorry about my handwriting. I have it sideways here. So this is UART1 where we're connecting it. So in the beta flights ports tab, you, you'll see all your UARTs. Make sure that UART1 has everything disabled except the little uh, checkbox that says uh, serial RX. That's very important. Then you go into configurations tab. And then under your receiver, serial based receiver, and then you choose whether it's SBUS, IBUS, or the TBS Crossfire, and you're good to go. Really, really that simple. And that's about it for this flight control. I really hope it helps somebody out there. The links are down below. Make sure you check those out to greatly support the channel. And if you have any issues, download Ask FPV. It's an application I've created to help the community. And uh, there's really awesome new features there right now. And we'll be implementing a chat system and some other things as well. But it's the best place to go get help for anything FPV. Or if you have any questions or getting started, go there. It's a really great place. There's a lot of people that are help out, helping out over there. And uh, also my social media platform for FPV pilots. Check it out. It's called FPV Link. Everything is linked down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.